Here's a review of the Bike Friday New World Tourist. So the reason uh, I I'd seen Bike Fridays in the different magazines, the the bike specific magazines over the years, and it never uh, really attracted much attention from me. But I realized at one point I was traveling across the country to do different types of rides, and traveling with a full size bike is just a pain. I have a bike, I have a specific bike box for traveling, but uh, there's added costs. Dragging that thing around from place to place was a pain. Trying to get it into a vehicle to get from the airport to wherever I was going, it just got to be a bit too much. So I started considering uh, different options to travel with uh, my bike. So I considered different brands. I looked at the Surly Long Haul Trucker, which is a bike I really like. My my wife actually has one. And I considered getting SNS couplers so that it could break down and, and fit into a, a smaller suitcase. But uh, the more I started reading about the Bike Friday, it just kind of grew on me. And, and that's the direction that I ultimately ended up going. So uh, for those who really care, this is the spec of my particular bike. And uh, so you can review that if you really care. I guess you could stop the video and look if you want. But... Um, one of the cool things is the Bike Fridays, they're custom made. And uh, <clears throat> in communicating with my contact at Bike Friday, I uh, asked if they'd be willing to take some photos and send me photos of my actual bike being built, which they did. And this, this is my bike, which I thought was really cool. So this is the bike. Uh, it's not as it currently sits. I've done a lot of modifications to it over the few years that I've been riding it. And I... I've had it since I ordered it in towards the end of 2017, received it in early 2018. And uh, so I've been riding it now for a couple of years and have at least several thousand miles on it, which I, I think qualifies uh, to give a pretty decent review. But this is how the bike was at least uh, a little while ago. I, I, I'm modifying it all the time just to, to I, I like doing that with my bikes. I change things up, but this is how it was at, at this point. Uh, you'll notice there's several different bags on it. The front bag, the handlebar bag, that's a, a North Street uh, uh, Pioneer 12, which worked really well as a uh, handlebar bag. Uh, I'm not currently using that, uh, but I still use the relevant design, the one in the, the uh, center there uh, along the main frame going up the, the seat tube. I use that, and then the one that's underneath the seat is a state uh, bicycle comp company uh, saddlebag. So, so this is the bike again. You'll notice I'm using a click stand, uh, which has served me well. Uh, there's uh, the bike has ample different attachments for water, bo water bottle cages, and this is an aftermarket cage. You'll see there on the on the steering tube, which I'll get into that later where I got that from. But this is the bike. Another angle of the bike, and then that's the cockpit. Uh, I went with the Bike Friday STI uh, touring bars, which those actually break down. They split in half, and I'll talk a little bit about that uh, shortly. But uh, at the time when I was first looking to get this bike, I was interested in these bars, but I just didn't find a lot of information, a lot of pictures of them, so I thought I'd throw them in uh, for this review. Here's another picture of the, the bars, and you'll notice I've got the bungees. That's just holding the brake closed, uh, which is something that goes along with the uh, the click stand that I use. I had a, a regular kick stand on the bike, but I, I it just wasn't serving me well. So I, I ended up buying a click stand. I've been pretty happy with it. thing works pretty well. And uh, using those bungees, and those aren't the bungees that came with the click stand. Those are just some bungee. I just bought regular old bungee cord and tied them into knots, and, and they work well for me. The, the bungees that come with the click stand work fine, but these, I think, are, are better for, for me anyway. And uh, it solves one of the issues, and it's a, it's another, it's a frequent issue that I've read others have, is the one of the challenges with the bike, because the, the main part of the tube, it doesn't have a top tube that you can just hold between your legs when you're stopped, and the bike, will it's easy to, to tip over. Well, I found that if I need to, if I come to a stop and, I'm, and I, I'm going to hold it steady, if I throw one of those bungees on the, the brake, uh, it's much easier to keep the thing upright, and it, it kind of solves that issue, so that's a moot point. Some more pictures of the bars. 
those are comfortable. It's a nice, it gives you a different hand positioning. And then another thing I like about these, the, these bars is they, because they curve up, you can put, that's a, a light in motion, uh, headlight and you can just attach it on the bar as you see here. Uh, I put a little piece of uh, black electrical tape just to block out because that particular light has, on either side of it, there are orange uh, lenses that pushes light out sideways for traffic to see you from the side. But if you've got it on the bar like I have it, it just shines an orange light in your face. So I put some tape on there and it solved the problem. Here's another picture of it. More pictures of the bars for those who think they might want to get them. And then with the attachment where the where those splittable packable bars go, this is how it came. And right here there's a little screw and you see that black sleeve that goes uh, between the faceplate of the the uh, the stem and uh, that sleeve just kind of gives rigidity and, and strengthens the the bar that connect in the center there and what that screw does I think its purpose is to hold that sleeve in place because it's not actually part of the the stem uh, pay attention if you get this bike because uh, I would forget to unscrew it and it'll scratch up the aluminum bars uh, if you get bigger than the 50 centimeter bars that I have I think from there uh, if you go much wider you get into uh, where the bar has to be steel, so it adds a little bit of weight, but uh, that's how that is set up. So that's the cockpit. And the brake levers I went with, I considered getting the the, the tri bike brake levers that might that would go up onto the, the front of the where the bar sweeps up. But ultimately I went with the Avid Speed uh, Dial 7s. I've got those on another bike. And I'm pretty happy with them. I like the feel. I like the adjustability. So I went with them. It was a little strange. That bar's a little narrow. So the brake levers seem to be a little bit uh, close together is, is how they felt to me when I first got it. Because uh, most of my riding would have my hands uh, at the ends of the bars and, and or up on uh, as if they were on the hoods of, of STI uh, brake shift levers. So it was a little bit of an adjustment, but once I got used to it, it was it was fine. It was normal, uh, and I have no issues with it. Ultimately, I did swap out these bars, which I've got some photos later on. They were a little narrow. I was starting to have some elbow pain, and I think it was because those bars are just a little bit narrow for me. And again, there's the light. So the brakes I had on, um, I actually just went with some very basic brakes, and then I upgraded because I had these. I've had these Avid... Uh, uh, ties, the single digit ties. I've had these for, for more than a few years and I really like them. They work well. So I decided to, to just move them uh, onto this bike. And of course, as soon as I got them, as soon as I put them on, one of the brake levers actually cracked. Like I said, I've had these things for years. And uh, so I was researching, trying to get another, another set of them. And I haven't purchased any uh, brakes for a while. And I was looking for the same uh, type of brake, the, the tie, and they just don't have them anymore. But my research, what I found is the only thing that makes them tie is that screw right there. So um, I purchased a new set of Avids and I just put the tie, left, the tie screw from the orange ones that I had onto these. And now these have been upgraded. So now I guess these are tie as well. So here's some more specs of the bike, and uh, I initially I was wearing, I, I've always, for more than uh, probably close to 25 or more years, I've been riding with clipless pedals, but uh, I recently decided, you know, I don't race, uh, most of what I do, I commute, I ride for exercise, and I expect to get in uh, to start doing some touring. So I, I decided to swap out and just put on some regular uh, platform pedals so I could just wear regular shoes. And this is what I'm using currently. And these, probably about a thousand miles on these pedals. And they're working fine. And I don't find that I've really lost any kind of uh, efficiency with the pedaling. Uh, it's tearing up the bottom. I wear keen uh, uh, sandals when I ride, generally, <laughs> whether with socks or not. But... Um, it's tearing up the bottom of those a little bit, but otherwise I, I like the the ability to just get off the bike and walk. And so these are serving me well. 
I do have the Bike Friday fenders, and the fenders come without any kind of stays. You'll see that I have fender stays on these particular fenders, and I upgraded. I found that the rear fender, not so much, but the front one especially, in certain wind conditions, I, that thing really gets to flopping around. So I decided I did some research, and I found these fender stays that I've been able to use. You can see right there where the arrow's pointing. Uh, this is how they, that's the only attachment point generally on the bike are those arrows on the picture to the right. But this is what I, what I went with and you can just get them off of Amazon. And this is how I attach them. It's not to say that you can't do it another way, but I just drilled little holes in the plastic because the fenders themselves are plastic. So I drilled a couple holes and I just hold them on with zip ties and the zip ties, uh, they do get, you know, they get brittle and they break. I live in, in the desert southwest of the United States. And so things dry out and from time to time these will break. But, you know, these little zip ties are cheap, so they're easy to replace. I carry a few in my in, with my bag of, of repair stuff uh, on the bike. I've never had a problem with it when I'm out riding, but they will break. Or if you travel with it, uh, it's something that you'd need to, you know, cut off and replace every time, especially if you're traveling. But they work well for me. And um, that's how I do it. And there it is. Those are the holes that I drilled in the plastic where the zip tie goes. And I guess you could use some type of a, uh, a more permanent setup if you wanted. You could get some type of a metal tie that'll hold them on, but it's worked well for me. So here's my dirty drivetrain. And something you need to pay attention to these, the, the different attachments for your, um, whether you're using it for your rack, uh, the fender stays, whatnot. You just have to be aware. You'll see the little gap. It, it, if you, you have to be careful with the screw that you're using so it doesn't go too far beyond um, the attachment because it'll, it'll uh, cut right into your drive train if you're not careful. So as I talked about earlier, one of the issues with the bike, the one of the few noticeable uh, issues are that it's when you stop, it's hard to just hold it upright like a normal bike because you don't have that top tube to just hold between your legs. But uh, with the, um, like I said, I use a click stand and the bungees, which you'll see the blue and black corded bungee, if when you're standing still you throw one of those on one of the brake levers, it holds it so it won't move back and forth. You can just kind of hold it, you can push back against the seat with your butt and it'll hold the bike upright. Uh, I, like I said, I don't do a lot of real heavy touring. I've, I've ridden around with this thing with panniers on, uh, somewhat loaded, but not, I, I, I'm not riding around with the bike weighing 100 pounds or more, uh, but I have no issue with uh, holding it upright when I have these, the bungees on the brake uh, levers and just pushing back against the seat. Here's just another picture of the, the cockpit. Well, this is an, uh, a picture of me uh, showing how easy it is to get those things on, and, and those aren't the stock bungees that came with the click stand, but that's what I'm using. It works well. And if you're using a setup like mine, where you've got something that will keep the bungee from going off the end of the the uh, handlebar, you can just kind of flip them up like that and, and it, it's not a problem. Currently I'm riding with a different handlebar, which I've got pictures of later. And I've actually lost one of the bungees because you know, it just it fell off the end of the, the handlebar when I wasn't paying attention. So, but you can just flip it on up over the end of the brake levers if, if you so choose or whatever works best for you. Right now what I do is I just take the bungee off when I'm not using it, throw it in my handlebar bag, and it works fine. So I'm running the Schwalbe, the Marathons. These tires are great. They're not the lightest in the world. Uh, these are just the regular Marathons, and they're 20-inch you know, wheels. Uh, Marathon makes uh, tires for the 20-inch wheels that are on the, the Bike Friday, the New World Tourist. And uh, I've had really good success with them. I, like I said, I've got several thousand miles on and it, these pictures were taken a little bit ago, so I've got a few more miles than what you're seeing here, but they work well. I, I've had a few flats, but the flats that I've gotten, and, and again, living in the desert south, southwest, it's easy to get flats, all the little goat heads and those types of things that are in the road. I don't have problems with those. The only flats I've gotten are, are big, big nails and, and other things that really no tire is going to be able to protect you from. Uh, I do have the uh, the, the more heavy-duty marathons, uh, the, the 
is it the Marathon Plus? I forget what the name of those are. But I've got those in a, in a 2.0 on a, on a different mountain bike that I'm riding. And those suckers are heavy, but man, they're durable as heck. I don't know that when these tires are done, if I'm going to upgrade to the more durable ones, I think these are fine. Um, and they've served me really well. So here I am, the ride of the bike. It, The bike, it's a funny looking bike. And if you're worried about how you're going to look, it's not a bike for you. But the thing rides, it feels very much like a full-size bike. It, uh, When you're just riding along, it, the steering is a little quick. But it otherwise, when you're just cruising along, it feels like a regular bike. You know, it's the gearing is such that it's compatible to a, a full-size bike. You're not going to get a super high-end gear. Uh, you're not at least this particular bike, you're, you're not going to be uh, winning any races or probably even participating in any races, but it does fine. I have an easy time uh, keeping along at a 17, 18 mile an hour pace with the gearing that I have on the bike. And I've actually swapped out. I, I bought the bike with a triple chain ring and I've upgraded it to a 105 with just a double with a 52 tooth uh, big ring. And uh, it's, it does pretty well. I ride this bike daily. So traveling with the bike, it really, it does make a difference. This thing is so easy to travel with. It fits in a suitcase, just a standard Samsonite, as you see there. Um, I was lucky enough on one of the trips I went on, uh, as I was sitting on the plane waiting to get off, I, I actually saw my bike getting unloaded from the plane. And it just, it, it goes as checked baggage, which is nice. No cost upgrade. So that's it. And then uh, another trip I, I did, I went to San Diego to visit a family member. And so I flew into the airport, put the bike together. And, and this bike, keep in mind, it, it's not a, it's not like you just, you land, you, you pull it out of the case and it, it just flips open and, you know, you just unpack it and it's good to go. It, there is a little bit of putting it together and taking it apart to travel with it. But it probably took me and, you know, I'm not... I don't put this thing in the suitcase and I definitely don't take it out daily. So it probably took me about half an hour to get the thing up and running into the condition. You see it here where I was ready to roll, but it was, it was really nice. I, I literally flew into the airport, went outside the airport with my luggage and put the bike together and rode where I needed to go. Because... <laughs> yeah. yeah, there he is. This guy just came from the airport on this thing. So that's, as you can see, it's, it's a funny looking bike. But the uh, the suitcase, if you decide to, to use the suitcase as a trailer, you can. That's an upgrade. It's an extra cost. Um, this is how the trailer attaches to the bike. It's just a fitting right there. You'll see it just connects onto there and, and uh, it works well. And here's just more pictures of the bike packed or getting packed. And uh, you can, it, it doesn't come with the suitcase. The suitcase is an upgrade, the packing material and all that. It's, it's all uh, upgrade. So this is not a cheap bike. I mean, if you're looking for something that's just a couple hundred bucks, the bike and the, the, all this setup, it is not inexpensive. You can get on the website, uh, Bike Friday, and, and, and get an estimate of what, you know, depending on what type of components and whatnot you want on there. So it's not an inexpensive bike, but it's not cost prohibitive. If you're, if you're into biking, you understand that, that biking isn't cheap. Um, so, but here's some pictures of the, the packing. And then as I talked about some of the add-ons, that's just the handlebar bag that I have from North Street, which I've been pretty happy with that thing. Those are made in America up in Oregon. And I've, I've got several of those bags that I'm using and I'm pretty happy with them. And then the water bottle, bottle cage that I have, this is one of my favorite add-ons. And I've got this on the, the riser tube, uh, the, the steering tube and this is it this is where i got it from amazon so it's it, it's not expensive and in order to get it to work as i have it there on the on the the bar coming up there's just a, a screw right there that where the arrow's pointing and you just unscrew that it allows it to, to swivel and then you tighten it down and it's good to go and the seat i'm currently riding if you noticed in some of the earlier photos i had a, a brooks saddle on it and i really liked the brooks it was comfortable but ultimately it was causing some issues that i decided to upgrade. So I switched over to this Sella Anatomica. And boy, I've been happy with these things. It's resolved uh, the issues. Uh, well, 
I've got other issues, but it solved the issues I was having with the Brooks. So um, it's a really comfortable seat. I've been riding one of these for a while. And then just here's some of the other add-ons that I had, and some of the other bags. And then that's the bike. And then, as I said, I've, I've I'm constantly upgrading things. I seem to change things a lot. So here's the bike, uh, fully loaded with the front and rear racks with the, some panniers on. And as you can see, I, I've changed the handlebar. That's a Jones uh, H-bar that I had on another bike that I decided to swap over to this bike. And I'm really happy with it. That bar is so comfortable. And a lot of the bike is adjustable. The, the handlebar, the, up, the riser bar that comes up, it's adjustable. You can bring it up or down as needed. Um, but the elbow pain that I was experiencing with the, the bars that I had on the bike when I first ordered it, this Jones bar has resolved those issues. And there again is the cockpit. Uh, in order to, I, I swapped over the, the Jones bars, I had it on the other bike. I had uh, twist shifters on it and those were fine, but I wanted to stay with, these are the, the uh, bar end shifters that I had on uh, the other handlebars. And I wanted to keep them. I do like them. They, they work well. Uh, but in order to swap them over to use them on this type of bar, I had to uh, purchase. These are uh, from Paul Components. They're, they're called Thummies. And what it does, it just allows you to connect those, those shifters onto there. Uh, if you do decide to go with an upgrade like this, just be aware that the metal is soft. Don't screw them too tight. You'll, you'll strip it out pretty easy. Um, which uh, I'm talking from experience. So just be careful with them, but they work really well. I'm very happy with them. So things to consider if you're out, if you're thinking you might want to get one of these bikes, uh, something to consider is the steering is just a little quick, but it's not prohibitive. I have no issues with it, but it's just something to be aware of. And as I've talked about standing uh, while the bike is stopped, it can be challenging, but it's resolved if you just put those bungees on the, on the, the brake levers and it kind of solves that issue. The, uh, Next is the, the, the gear inches. You're going to have a little bit less of a high end. So if you're looking to really cruise along at a high speed, you know, the gearing is adjusted for the small wheels and you're going to get a little bit quicker acceleration if you need it because the wheels are smaller. But overall, if, when you're cruising along, your top end is not going to be, if you're used to riding a, you know, a carbon fiber road bike or something that's, that's really high end and, and, you know, that type of a road bike, you're not going to be able to uh, keep that kind of pace with this thing. Although it does pretty well, it's just not its not as high as uh, those other types of bikes. And it's a little bit funny looking. I read about other people that, you know, really it's a, it's a conversation starter. I've had a few people stop me and ask about it in, in, in a few conversations, but it's not something that happens on a regular basis. Whether or not people are making fun of me as I ride by, I have no idea and I don't care. So things I like about the bike. It's a funny looking bike. I'll just call it unique, but it, it, it's something different. And it really does ride very much like a full size bike. It's easy to step over, especially if you're, if you're going to be doing some touring. I'm not 20, I'm not 25 anymore. I'm, I'm quite a bit older than that. And uh, swinging my leg over the back end when the, when the panniers are on uh, with the rear rack, it's getting harder and harder the older I'm getting. So, and, and I'm not old yet, but like I said, I'm not, I'm not young either. So with the low uh, tube, it's easy to just step into it. It makes it pretty easy. And I like that it's custom built. This bike was literally built to my specs. And ultimately, the reason I purchased it is it's packable. It fits in a suitcase. It travels as check baggage. And it, unless you're paying for your check baggage, a regular bag, it's, it's uh, free. So that's my review of the Bike Friday, New World Tourist. Feel free to email me if you have questions.